everyone. Boy, a lot of energy out there. Someone told me they thought it was cold today. Really? Come on. Come on, come on. The people in the Bronx are tough, right? This is not a cold day. We can handle this. Uh, first being from Buffalo, I have a different perspective on what cold is. But uh, great to see everybody here today. And I do feel the warm welcome, Maria, to everyone here who's part of this outstanding organization, the point that just makes people have a gathering place, a space where they feel their lives can be bettered, that their people care deeply about them. And I thank you for being the leader of this uh, incredible organization. So we have some incredible leaders here as well. I want to thank uh, Senator, but also Majority Leader. It's an important title. I think we get a little used to calling our Senator, Ma Senator Schumer. I spent a little time in Washington. Majority Leader is a very big deal. And he has tremendous influence. And we are the beneficiaries of someone who knows his state like no other, who is passionate about places all across the state, but particularly here in the Bronx. And I want to thank him for being a champion of this community, but also of the infrastructure projects that are federal state partnerships, which is my polite way of saying, keep sending us the money and we'll be happy to spend it, Chuck Schumer. So thank you very much. And another partner in the Congress, Richie Torres, who we've met many, many times talking about how we can work together to help the people of his beloved district uh, have a better shot in life. And I, and I appreciate the passion you bring to your job and I uh, look forward to deepening our friendship in many years to come. Congressman Richie Torres. We also have Vanessa Gibson. Uh, what an incredible leader she has. It's, it's hard to believe you're just coming up on a year, right? I mean, I, I feel like you've you know, you've had to overcome so many challenges, and you know, we really cemented our relationship dealing with that horrific tragedy, the, the fire that occurred here uh, so early in your tenure. And I want to thank you for uh, the way you put your heart and soul into this community. Let's give another round of applause to our borough president. I also got to know, as Lieutenant Governor, the former borough president, Ruben Diaz Jr. Uh, you were extraordinary. We keep this guy close because uh, he has a lot of wisdom to impart to me. We have a lot of great conversations, so thank you. Also, uh, another friend not too far from here, George Latimer, the county executive of Westchester County. Thank you for being here, George. Where's George go? Oh, where George is. Let's give George a chair. Somebody give George a chair. <laughs> I don't know where he is. Oh, he's right. Oh, he's there. Okay, George. Uh, thank you for joining us. And again, uh, our leadership from the transportation world, Jenna Lieber. Uh, who his nickname is on time, under budget. That's what I say, on time, under budget. He gets it done, but uh, thank you. Thank you for, you know, there's a lot of slings and arrows out there. Um, not that I'm not familiar with that situation myself, but uh, it does make you stronger. It does make you stronger, and I want to thank you for uh, being undeterred in your quest to make sure that we deliver this region, the world-class transportation network that they all deserve. So thank you, Jana Lieber, for uh, working so closely with us. And another person that is critically important to all this is Tony Kosha, uh, the chairman of Amtrak. Uh, to be here right here today is an important signal of his priorities, the administration's priorities, and all of our priorities to make sure that communities that have been overlooked for too long finally get justice. And that's what today is all about, that we no longer have to say that people of Bronx are relegated to a transit desert, that they have access to good paying jobs in other communities. And that's what's so exciting about this. So Tony, thank you for your friendship and your partnership as well. And Kathy Rinaldi, uh, the interim president of the Metro North LA, or I want to thank her for being uh, at all these events with us. But it's not just the events, it's the work that's done every single day, day in and day out. And I want to thank you and all your teams, uh, all the teams that are involved here as well. So. I'm excited to be here, can you tell? Uh, this, is a, this is an infrastructure project that goes back at least four governors. Uh, people have been talking about this for over 30 years. And most of you look too young to remember all this, but uh, it's been a long time, and a long time coming. A lot of people have lived here, been raised here, died here, and never had a chance to really understand what true freedom is all about freedom to be able to have access to transportation without having most of your life confined to walking and taking a bus and taking another, tra another train and trying to figure out a way to get to the jobs that are there. All it took was a simple linkage that was missing for so long. And so uh, we've been talking about this a long time, but today things are happening. And projects like this really do have an impact on people's lives very profoundly, very profoundly. And to me, infrastructure is all about connections. That's why since I became governor short time ago, um, it's all I talk about. Because I've seen communities that have been severed
by infrastructure projects from the 1950s and 60s when they thought the way to you know, deal with a place like Buffalo and Syracuse and Rochester and uh, the Cross Bronx Expressway, you create a barrier, you put an artery, you sever the artery that goes to the heart of a community. And we're gonna continue working to heal the wounds that were created from that. And that is what we're talking about uh, overall in our infrastructure philosophy and creating connections. People can get to their jobs, their schools, their families, their loved ones easier. And getting from point A to point B as efficiently as possible. Because time spent commuting is time you're not doing what you really wanna do. Because I don't know if there's a single person out there who says, I look forward to being in my long commute every day. Now, maybe if you got a lot of kids at home and it's your escape at your quiet time, you might have a different philosophy on that. Yeah, let's have a little longer commute. Let me, let me delay my trip home. But I'm gonna guess that most people wanna be with their families and their friends and uh, get to their jobs as soon as possible. So, you know, two hours and 40 minutes a day commuting, I bet everybody here can think of other things you could do with two hours and 40 minutes. I mean, you can get in great shape, you can work out every day, you can uh, explore local restaurants and take the kids to the park in a stroller. I mean, there's so many things to do. Uh, and that's what's important to me. It's all about quality of life. And if we can use something that sounds as cold and detached as infrastructure to make people's lives better, that's when I get excited. And that's what we're talking about here today. Uh, we are talking about making access available to a community that I love. I've come to love the Bronx because maybe it does have something to do with coming from a place called Buffalo, where people kind of look down on you a lot and underestimate you, and you get a little chip on your shoulder. You gotta be tougher than the rest to prove you've got what it takes. And I felt that connection to the Bronx since I started coming here almost a decade ago with great regularity. And so this is an extraordinary place. It's a place that people have no idea how charming the downtown art areas are, the, the businesses, uh, walking the streets, going to Orchard Beach, going to City Island, going to all the extraordinary places we have here. You know, the universities, the community colleges, the parks, the botanical gardens. A couple of weeks ago, I had a few hours, and my husband and I just went up to the botanical gardens here in the Bronx. And it was spiritually uplifting. And we have that right here. And I'm gonna continue talking about this because this is a borough, a community that truly matters. But people in the past have not made decisions that made them feel that way here in the Bronx. And that's what we're rectifying here today. So we're talking about a way to enhance economic development around our transit hubs when we build these. We're going to be able to have more businesses, more life, more connection, little coffee shops, little dry clean. These are all going to step up there. So we're gonna have a one seat ride directly into Penn Station, one seat ride to Penn Station. This is going to be life changing for people. Uh, and that's what I'm excited about. And conversely, if you wanna to go to Westchester, right? County Executive, why wouldn't you wanna go up to Westchester? See family, friends, connections, and bring people from Westchester. In this. So this is a whole connection, which is gonna be extraordinary. And if you really wanna to go to Connecticut, you can as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, but. This transit desert in East Bronx is gonna be gone. Over half a million Bronx residents uh, will, live, will live within one mile, one mile of one of these new stations. Co-op City, I was just there a few weeks ago. Morris Park, Parkchester, Van Ness and Hunts Point. All these communities are gonna be transformed in a matter of a few years. And that's what this is all about. And I also wanna talk about where people live because we're making these areas more attractive. When you have this kind of transit, look how beautiful that looks. Uh, this is going to be stunning, and it's what the people of these communities deserve. But where are people going to live? They want to be here. They're going to want to come here. But if you can't find a house, you can't afford a house, now it doesn't work. And so I want to take a second to commend Mayor Adams for his announcements on housing yesterday and talk about transit-oriented development. What does that mean? It means if you're going to build stations like this, why do people have to walk 20, 25 minutes to get to that station? Let's build housing right there as well. So zonings will take place, rezonings will take place that say, yes, now that we have this anchor, you have this access, people are gonna to wanna to live there, so let's open it up for affordable housing, market rate housing, let's change the whole community. This is a once in a generational opportunity, and that's what we're doing. So that's what this is about. We're gonna save time, at least 50 minutes in each direction, that's two hours a day. Uh, heading out to Westchester, saving 70 minutes, and also 
promoting. This will give an opportunity for people who want to be educated here. Come to our community colleges. Come to our colleges. Come on up here. Uh, explore many areas that we have not been able to access quite as easily. But also, access to good paying jobs. Let's think about that. In Manhattan, the average weekly wage, about $4,000, $211,000 a year, Manhattan jobs. That's nice. Now, if you're trapped in areas, let's say the Bronx, because it just doesn't make sense for you to commute hours a day, the average wage is 61000 Now, if you can get on a one-seat ride to Penn Station, all of a sudden a job that pays 211000 in that range is available to you, think about what that does to your family as well. So it opens up your access from this community to good paying jobs in other places and vice versa. So that is also an important outgrowth. So, and Penn Station, the access, I'm sorry, Penn Access is also gonna be a job creator itself. There's 40,000 jobs associated with building this. That is going to be so powerful for our good, hard working members of the unions to have these jobs for their families and know that they have this going for many years to come. It's also good for the environment. Fewer cars, fewer cars on the road. We're going to have 80,000 fewer vehicle miles traveled a day. 80,000 vehicle miles less a day when people start taking advantage of this. So fewer greenhouse emissions and the asthma and all these other situations that we're trying to solve for right now can be remedied when the more people have this available to them and take advantage of it. So, so that's what it's all about, saving money, fixing up the lines, making sure that we use existing infrastructure this is why we can save money. You take existing lines and you marry them into the project. So that was the brilliance behind this. And we're going to continue working to secure more federal funding uh, to support our investments here. So I want to thank Majority Leader Schumer again for his commitment. So we're arriving in Penn Station. Uh, so why don't we make Penn Station even better, right? We're going to take you all the way here. Let's get you to something spectacular at Penn Station. And that is a project that I go to bed thinking about every night. How are we going to move that along? So I am committed. I am relentless in my pursuit of making sure that this happens because in my lifetime, and I'm not getting any younger people, I want to make sure that our legacy is, is that for generations to come, they'll say, finally, finally someone had the guts to take on what as people are saying is a challenging project, but that is no excuse. That is not an excuse to me. I don't mind taking on a good fight. And if it's going to lift up people's experiences, give them what they deserve when they come into Penn Station, instead of feeling you're in the depths of hell, that you're raised up to the heights of heavens, that is what we're offering our residents, and they'll have access from these projects. That is the connection we're talking about. So uh, we have a lot more to do. We've done a lot. We've been working on Project East Side Access. Stay tuned for that. Not tipping off anything here, right? No dates? No. Soon? Okay. Soon, soon. That is happening in my lifetime. I just want you to know that. Uh, that is happening in my lifetime. I know. I know. Uh, that's happening very soon. Stay tuned. I'm excited about that project as well. And uh, what we just did with the LIRR, uh, the third track, again, projects that were dreamed about, talked about, planned about, and never happened, never came to fruition. So it's all about the people of New York, the people of these communities, letting them know they matter. This is going to bring jobs, opportunity, and again, better the lives of New Yorkers. And that's why I am so passionate about getting this done. And another person who shares that passion, and I know will be here with me in 2027 or sooner when we cut the ribbon on this project, is our majority leader, Chuck Schumer. Thank you for your leadership, Chuck Schumer. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Great to be here. I want to thank The Point, a great organization, and Maria Torres for her outstanding leadership there. And I want to thank everybody for filling this room up. It's great. It's a beautiful morning. And before I get into um, our subject at hand, uh, we are here in Hunts Point. And since we're in the neighborhood, I just wanted to mention that Congre your great Congressman Richie Torres and I just secured $110 million federal dollars uh, for the modernization of the Hunt Point produce market. So essential. <laughs> this is essential for the food supply of all of the New York metropolitan area. But one of the beautiful things about it, three quarters of the workers there live south of the Cross Bronx Expressway. These are community people benefiting from this great project, 
Um, it's, and guess what? All of the jobs are union. So they're good paying jobs as well. Um, so it's a great thing for Hunts Point, and it was long overdue that we build up the Hunt Point market to the 21st century standards. And with the only grant from DOT's infra, infra program, the whole program nationally is a billion dollars. We got 110 million of it. It's good to be the majority leader. Um, uh, Hunts Point will now have a great opportunity. Now, on to the subject today, Penn Station access. It means two big things. One, the East Bronx will no longer be a transit desert, finally. And second, people from the Bronx and Westchester will be able to go directly to Penn Station. We had it all, you know, the original plans, if you're from Long Island, you could only go to Penn Station and not Grand Central. If you're from Westchester in the Bronx, you could only go to Grand Central, not Penn Station. But with East Side Access, something I've worked long and hard on, and this great project, we straighten that mess out. And wherever you live in the metropolitan area, you can go to either station. And that's a huge thing for our transit. First, I want to thank everyone who worked so hard with me on this project. Of course, our great governor, Kathy Hochul, our outstanding rising star. Well, he's a star already. He's not rising anymore. Richie Torres represents this district. Uh, Congressman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who represents, well, we don't have the map up there. I told Richie, one of the things about being governor that's better than senator, I'd rather be senator, they can make all those nice charts and pictures and have the people to do that. Well, these beautiful, but she represents the, poor, the two northern stations there. Our great MTA CEO, Jan Lieber, who has really done a professional, great job at the MTA. No more politics, no more bull, getting it done. Our wonderful, nobody fights harder for the Bronx. Anytime I go to the Bronx, and that's a lot, she's always there and always delivering and always doing good things. Our great, great borough president, Vanessa Gibson. And I might add, following in the footsteps of our great, great former borough president, who's here because he cares so much and started out on all this and worked with me on this project, Ruben Diaz, Jr. This is a metropolitan area project. A whole lot of East Westchester, of the eastern half of Westchester County is affected. And George Latimer is somewhere around here. I don't know where he is, our county executive. Thank you. He does a great job there. And we have our local officials who have really helped. Senator Luis Sepulveda is here. Uh, Sepulveda is here. And three of our wonderful council members, Rafael Salamanca, Amanda Farias, and Marjorie Velasquez. And this project's so big, it covers all of their districts, even though they're all over the Bronx, these three districts. So that's a great thing. Now, today's been a long time in coming, a very long time in coming. I remember holding a press conference, sometimes I do those things, um, back in January 2019, outside Co-op City, where they were desperate for good transit. And the focus was getting Amtrak and the MTA to play nice on the details of sharing access to the Hell's Gate Line and to the Pelham Bay Bridge, and also who was going to put in what amount of money. So thankfully, I was able to bring the MTA and Amtrak together. We hashed out the details and overcame this huge hurdle which had stood in the way of making this project occur. Tony Koch is nodding his head. I said, I get Amtrak a lot of money. Let's have some of it for this project. And Geno, same thing with the MTA. And so uh, we got that done to arrive at this day, the groundbreaking of the Park Chester train station, one of the four new Metro North stations on that beautiful, can we put that, even though I'm a senator, can we put that up? <laughs> Let's put that nice picture of all those nice stations up. Um, uh, the one seat train ride for the South Bronx and parts of Westchester to Penn Station and the west side of Manhattan. This means a lot of things, as the governor outlined. Reduced travel time, greater job opportunities, and a more resilient and interconnected regional rail network. So why is this important? Tra there's a big equation that's not up on this chart. <laughs> See, if you're not the governor, they don't listen to you. Hey, you guys, put up the chart. <laughs> anyway, it's a Friday. We're having some fun, you know. 
we elected, we elected a great man in Georgia, so we're still on cloud nine. Re-elected. Um, uh, anyway, um, transit development equals community development. Transit development equals community development. And as we continue to rebuild our economy coming out of the pandemic, we should do everything we can to make sure it's an equitable recovery. It affects all parts of New York, not just certain privileged parts of New York. That means prioritizing the outer boroughs and communities like the South Bronx that have been neglected for far too long. That's what Penn Station Access is all about. And now we have an interagency consensus and just as important, the resources to get the job done. All the consensus in the world won't do you much good unless you have the cash. And I was proud to lead the effort and write and pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill in the Senate last year, over a trillion dollars of much needed infrastructure, more than we have done in decades and decades and decades. That legislation de delivered tens of billions of dollars in transit funding to New York. As majority leader, I have some say in writing these formulas, and you can be sure the formulas are favorable to us. There are lots of places that don't understand that we have the bulk. There it is. Thank you, Governor. I love maps. When I was a little boy, my father, he would get home from his little exterminating business at uh, 7.30 at night, and we had already, um, my mom had fed us dinner. And he would, we had a map on our wall. My brother and I shared a room, and we had a map on the wall. And he would come teach us about things. So I've always loved maps because I associate that with my father. He also, by the way, when he came home, he smelled, my, he smelled of all those chemicals. My sister once sent him a Father's Day card. You know, he passed away a year ago, so he's always on my mind. He sent her, she, she sent him a Father's Day card. Dad, we're the only family that associates the smell of DDT with love. <laughs> In any case, thank you for the map. Um, I digress. Uh, so the legislation, as I said, provides tens of billions to New York and tens of billions to Amtrak, which has also been a passion of mine. The money is going to fund the lion's share of this Penn Station access. These federal dollars that you read about last year are now producing real results. Of the $3.2 billion in the project, Amtrak, thank you, Tony Kosha, Amtrak is contributing 500 million, and New York State and the MTA are applying for $2.1 billion from the Federal Railroad Administration's Fed-State Partnership. And I have some good news on that last point. It's not only allocating, the, uh, legislating and passing the dollars, but it's then making sure the agencies get the money out there. So the FRA, the Federal Railroad Administration, recently signaled that Penn Station access would be a, would be a strong candidate for the state, Fed State Partnership Program. And they listed, here's how they intend to give out the money, $1.3 billion in their federal, this is just from fiscal year 23's inventory, and the rest will be done in future years. That's a lot of money. So I'm going to be keeping a close eye on them. I watch them like a hawk to make sure they deliver on that allocation. Well, this is a no-brainer project. We're going to make sure they commit more money moving forward each year to reach the maximum possible federal share for this project, relieving the burden from New York taxpayers, city and state. And that's what happens when we have all the levels of government, you've heard the many people who are here today, uh, aligned on a project that is so strong on the merits. And as I said, with the arrival of the East Side Access, which is sort of the mirror image connecting Long Island to Grand Central Station, just as we're collecting, connecting the Bronx and Westchester to Penn Station. And when those are completed um, uh, with the east side access and the rehab of the East River Tunnels, which has, as the governor mentioned, been a long time in coming, I fought, which I also got federal dollars for, um, we're going to have this money. Plus, more good news. The next phase of the Second Avenue subway extension into Harlem, East Harlem, another underserved area, another desert in terms of transit is going to happen as well uh, through funding in the federal CIG program. And then, of course, something that's been a passion of mine, where the governor has been so cooperative, is Gateway, which will be the largest public works project in the country 
employing tens and tens of thousands of workers, good jobs, union jobs, as we make sure that those tunnels under the Hudson River are still viable, because we know what would happen if they collapsed. Here's the bottom line, folks. Because of what we were able to do, having a majority Democrat Senate, House, and President, we've really infused money into public transit that we have never had before. And New York is building the next generation of our public transit system that is going to help keep our city growing, keep attracting new people, keep attracting new businesses, keep, keep pulsing with the energy that makes New York City this special place that we love so much. So when people say, well, what does Washington and all that have to do with me? A lot. But our job, and why we're here today, is making sure all those dollars come here and actually employ people to build this stuff and then make people's lives a lot better uh, once the stuff is completed. So I'm proud to be here, glad to be here. Apologize, I'm on my way to Putnam County. You know I visit every county every year. It's getting close to the end of the year. I have three left, <laughs> one of which is Putnam County, so I'm on my way there. Thank you, everybody. It's a great morning. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podium.